Hello everyone, welcome back, hope we're having a great day and we're all doing well. So as a brand new update came out to Rainbow Six Siege today, and one of the things it has done has added even more lore descriptions to the battle pass on top of the ones we have already looked at. Now this gives us an even more deeper understanding of Nighthaven's position currently with the whole Deimos situation, the impact into which Sledge was injured, Ash's current condition, of course she is still in a coma, and some more views on the new Operator Fenrir. Now before we continue, just want to quickly say if you haven't subscribed already, then be sure to hit that sub button. We're trying to hit 100k by the end of the year and I need all the support I can get. So let's get into this video. So the first one we have here is really interesting. This is actually Callie talking about Ash. Of course Ash is in a coma and it's really interesting to finally see Callie's reaction to this and her stance on this because those two have been opposing characters in the story for a very long time and it's clear that they don't really get along. What Callie has to say about Ash being in a coma is don't tap out yet princess we have unfinished business. So it's sort of like hey you know don't die on me. I still have my issues with you and I still need to sort it out with you. So it's a bit of a sort of passive aggressive way. It's clear that she still isn't friends with Ash, but like I theorized, Callie isn't a bad person and she doesn't want Ash to die. And I think that is a little confirmation on that. And I'd like to see the dynamic of these two operators explored more in the future. And once again, it is just really cool to see Callie's reaction to Ash being in a coma. And it's clear that Callie doesn't want Ash to die and I think that is quite nice. Next one is from Flores talking to Ash, I assume he's talking to her while she is laying in the bed in the coma, and he says, Hey Capitana, when you wake up, I'll make you a whole buffet just come back to us. And this is really sweet because we do know that Flores and Ash are quite good friends in the lore. I mean, she is the person who recruited him into Team Rainbow and they did work together in the past. And it is really nice just to see Flores looking out for his friend. And it's just a really sweet gesture. And it's just nice that Ubisoft are showing that these operators do care about each other. They show all the conflicts that they have, but it is really nice when they do show the nice relationships and friendships which they do have as well. Next one is by Oryx talking about Fenrir. And he says, that look of isolation in Fenrir's eyes. I know it all too well. And of course, this makes a lot of sense if you understand the backstory of Oryx, where he was actually held in isolation for 15 years, and it's clear that he can sympathize with Fenrir, and it seems like he is one of the operators who do feel empathy for Fenrir and do genuinely trust him. Out of any operators, Oryx knows what it feels like to be isolated, so if he can sympathize with Fenrir on that, then I'm sure a lot of the other operators are going to trust him as well. And it's also quite interesting that Oryx does kind of seemingly trust Fenrir, but Oryx's mentor, Kai, doesn't and we learned that in the battle pass as well so there's quite a little cool dynamic going on there and I wonder if they're going to develop that further and we had another bit by Oryx where he says I'm not a fan of all this infighting at the fortress we had a way to settle this kind of matter brutal but effective. Now I wonder when he says this if he's talking about the conflict between Nighthaven and Rainbow or if he's talking about a lot of the operators kind of not trusting Fenrir and disagreeing with Thermite bringing him into Redhammer. Now on the topic of Kaid, we have another one by him and it says the pain of failure never fully leaves you Thermite just be sure it does not cloud your judgment and I think this is talking about the fact that Thermite obviously was on that mission where the operators got injured so therefore he failed and Kaid is sort of saying you know don't let that cloud your judgment because he kind of sees that Fenrir being an option to take down Deimos is a bit too good to be true maybe and Thermite is kind of looking past that because he wants to win. He's dreading the fact that he failed and he's regretting it and he wants to beat Deimos. But Kaid on the other hand doesn't trust Fenrir and it seems like he believes that the failure which Thermite partook in is clouding his judgment when it comes to picking allies. And again Kaid is heavily against Fenrir but other operators such as Oryx who once again was trained by Kaid seems to be on board with Fenrir so like I said once again very interesting arc there. Now in the next one we get a little bit by Nomad. Nomad was the other student which Kai trained. He trained both Oryx and Nomad and it seems like Nomad is saying this to Thermite and what she says is Kai is an unparalleled teacher and mentor. Don't be too quick to dismiss his wisdom. So it does seem that there is a little bit of conflict within Redhammer and Kai is trying to you know challenge Thermite on his decisions and let's be honest Kai is is a leader. He leaded the fortress. So it makes a lot of sense with someone such as Kaid's wisdom and background that he is going to be challenging Thermite on a lot of his decisions. And again, going back to Oryx's one where he's talking about the infighting, it seems like this is his view on this as well. You know, back on the fortress, there is a way to sell it. Sort of, and I imagine jokingly implying that Kaid and Thermite should have a fight and, you know, fight it out, and that's how they can come to their conclusion. But I do quite like that leaders such as Kaid are sort of contesting Thermite, and although not aggressively going against him, are just being yes men and are raising real concerns. 
Next, we have one by the fellow Red Hammer member Fuse, and he says, Fenrir said goodbye to Deimos by blowing up his whole compound in Brazil. What's more Red Hammer than that? And of course, it's very fittingly that Fuse is saying this, since his entire gadget revolves around blowing stuff up. So yeah, it seems like we can add Fuse to the list of operators which seemingly are on board with Fenrir. And I'm gonna have to make a comprehensive list of all the operators we know who are for and against Fenrir. And I do quite like that not everyone is on board with him, they are still quite sceptical of him. And on the other hand, not everyone one is fully against them. It's quite a realistic view on the entire situation because people will be for and against it and it just adds to the further sort of turmoil a lot of these operators will have together when they are working together. They may be on the same team but that doesn't mean they like to make all the same decisions. This next one is actually by Blackbeard and we don't really hear a lot of Blackbeard in the lore at all and of course he is also on Red Hammer. Originally said to be on Viper Strike but they changed that quite recently without much explanation. I think it was just a designed by the lore team, and I think Blackbeard does make more sense on Red Hammer. But what he says is, I've met a lot of nasty characters in my time. Svensson is less of a wolf, and more of a runt who got left behind. Poor guy. This is very similar to the Capcan one where he refers to Fenrir as a puppy and it is just quite clear that Fenrir was this person who was sort of an outcast in every field he tried to pursue, and a lot of our operators are feeling sorry for him. Some of them, as we've seen, aren't really on board with him and do think that maybe he is a spy for Deimos, but I do truly believe that he is just someone who was exploited, he just was very outcast from a lot of people, and it did eventually lead him to Team Rainbow. And I think our operators are rightfully feeling sorry for him because he was an outcast most of his life. Of course, check out my Fenrir lore video if you haven't seen that. And yeah, the story of Fenrir is quite sad, and it's clear our operators can see that, and I truly do think a lot of that is going to play more into the character going forward. Now the final two pieces we have are talking about Sledge, and we finally get an understanding of what happened to him in that blast. So of course, in the CGI cinematic, we only got to see what happened to Thermite and Ash, later confirmed that Thermite was injured, he used crutches, and Ash was in a coma. But reading the following statement from Sledge, we can learn what happened to him. So he says, Two broken ribs, a fractured wrist, and a few pieces of shrapnel lodged in my leg. Deimos should have used a bigger bomb. So yeah, really interesting to finally learn what happened to Sledge in that blast, and how much damage it actually done to him. I imagine that Kivera and Zofia suffered a similar fate, you know, a few broken bones, but nothing fully life-threatening and definitely not on the caliber of what happened to Ash. And the next one we have is by Thorn talking about Sledge, of course these two operators are really good friends in the lore, and what she says is, Sledge is as stubborn as they come. Doc told him to get some rest, but he's already out there swinging that hammer. I'm not about to play nurse. So yeah, even after his injuries, Sledge is already out there, you know, basically training and getting ready to fight once again. It seems like Thermite is taking a bit of a back seat right now, whilst he does recover. Ash is of course still in a coma, and we are yet to fully learn what happened to both Kavera and Zofia. So that is all of the brand new pieces of lore in the Battle Pass for Operation Dread Factor. Of course, check out the other video which has the other bits of lore. These are just brand new additions which came in today's patch. Really interesting to learn about Kali's perspective on Ash being in a coma. We get more opinions on Fenrir being part of Team Rainbow slash Red Hammer, and of course we finally got an update on the condition of Sledge. So be sure to let me your thoughts in the comment section below about these brand new pieces of lore. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy, dislike it if you did not, subscribe if you are new, and I'll catch you all later. I love you all. Stay safe. Peace.